recently played Castlevania Bloodlines, and let me start off by saying this is a great game. So I had no idea what I was getting into, I didn't know what to expect, but once I started playing it, it quickly hit me that this was going to be one of my favorite games in the franchise that I've played so far. First thing I noticed was there are no Belmonts in this game. When I saw John Morris and Eric Lacard pop up on the selection screen, my first thought was, who are these assholes? But then I learned that John was a distant descendant of the Belmont family and Eric had a girlfriend that was connected to Elizabeth Bartley in the game. So whatever, that's fine. Not like I'm super knowledgeable about Vania lore anyways, it just threw me off. This game looks and sounds amazing. I mean, I think all the 8-bit and 16-bit Castlevania games are fantastic, but this one really takes the cake when it comes to effects and showing you that it's not messing around. This game does things that I've never seen another game do. I think the first place I noticed this was in Stage 2. You're in the Atlantis Shrine in Greece, and besides there being a killer sunset, there's also a really impressive reflection effect in the water beneath you. Not only is there a reflection of you, but the water rises and falls throughout this section too. It's a little trippy seeing yourself in the reflection. Oh my god! This stage also has the Leaning Tower of Pisa, which is another impressive sight to behold. You're continuously going up the tower as you dodge and whip Medusa heads while trying to keep your footing. The way everything moves reminds me of the first signs of a migraine, but in the best way possible. Stage 5 has this really nice effect when you're walking through the hallway where there's knights and falling chandeliers, where you really feel like you're seeing the sun shine through the window panes. But soon, you'll encounter what I call the swirly staircase from hell. Trying to keep up with the swirling stairs is hard enough, but you also have to dodge bone pillars and flying demons that obviously hurt you. Then, they can also knock you off balance, causing you to plummet back to the bottom of the stairs. Although it's impressive effects-wise, this level sucks. But little did I know it was going to get a whole lot worse. In stage 6, it's castle time. So you'd think I'd be talking about Dracula. But no. Dracula is definitely not the problem here. It's almost everything else in this level that's the problem. After you cross the bridge, you enter what at first seems to be a standard Castlevania-looking room with candles and, of course, staircases but you quickly see that something is definitely up. The screen is freaking split into three sections, along with some weird mirror effect where at first you legit think your Genesis is messed up. I'll admit that at first I thought there was totally something wrong with the cartridge or my console because I've never seen anything like this. Yes, it's really impressive from a special effects standpoint, and again, I've never seen anything like this in a game ever, but oh my god is it mean. Like, I think this might be the meanest, most unforgiving level in a 16-bit game that I've ever played. Not the hardest, but the meanest. And here's why. So once you realize you need to just focus on your feet when making jumps, it's still pretty tough. It takes a lot of concentration to not let your eyes play tricks on you. It may look easy, but if your eyes wander to the wrong spot for a second, Boom, you're falling to your death. Fuck! And if trying to keep track of the platforms wasn't hard enough, you also have to watch out for flying Medusa heads. Because of course you do. This is Castlevania after all. Generally, if once you see one on screen, you just stay where you are and whip straight ahead, you'll get them. But they can still be annoying. Especially if they hit you and knock you back. So once you clear that part of the stage, you think the worst is over. But nope, I've actually had a lot more trouble with the part coming up than the part I just talked about, though I'm sure there are a lot of people that will disagree with me. The next room is entirely upside down, which sounds straightforward and easy enough, right? Well, not for me. First, you have to kill a knight and whatever, and that's not hard. But then you need to walk upstairs and start jumping platform to platform, all the while you're upside down. Now, in my opinion, that would be tough enough, but you also need to time your jumps accordingly because there are those annoying glowing orbs circling each platform. Again, I know this isn't the hardest thing in the world, but it's pretty messed up. Later in this stage, you finally encounter Elizabeth Bartley, which is not a super straightforward boss to beat. 
Normally, you just figure out where to hit a boss and then just keep hitting them until their health is drained. With her, you don't do any damage until all of her bubble orbs, or whatever they're called, are gone. I had trouble figuring this out, but thanks to my lovely stream chat, I finally got the hang of it. Every time you hit her, one orb disappears. But you can't just hit her. You also have to do it super fast. So once you get a rhythm down, you eventually hit her until all of the orbs are gone, and then you start doing damage. Okay, so now that we've covered why I think this has some of the coolest and meanest features in any 16-bit game I've ever played, let's talk about a few of the enemies and bosses. There were numerous times where I got super excited about an enemy or boss, which was a super fun experience. There's Wheelie McWheelerson in Stage 5, who looks like a robot knight on a Segway, and he's quickly followed by a dude with a machine gun hand. This just struck me as so uncastlevania y that I couldn't help but laugh. Oh my god! What the fuck? Oh my god! The same goes for the gear boss in Stage 4. Look how cute he is! He's also kind of terrifying, but I'm into it. This is probably one of my favorite bosses ever because it's kind of like they took the gears out of the clock tower in another Castlevania game and put them together to create this little robot guy. Another honorable mention was the beginning of stage 5. These roses that sprinkle poison fairy dust that makes your controls backwards are pretty out of the ordinary. And annoying. But all that being said, Dracula himself and the end of the game isn't too bad. I admit I had some trouble with the final form, or as I call him, Cockademon Crotch, but once I figured out what to do, it was fine for the most part. Yes! So those are my thoughts on Castlevania Bloodlines. What are some of the meanest moments in video games that you've encountered? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.